Westfield, New Jersey, with its train to the city and beautiful old Victorians, is the setting for Robert Caplow's young adult novel, Me and Orson Welles, now a movie starring Zac Efron and Claire Danes, directed by Richard Linklater of School of Rock fame. This is the story of one week in my life. I was 17. It was the week I slept in Orson Welles' pajamas. It was the week I fell in love. The week I would make my Broadway debut. What the hell is it now? And the week I would meet Orson Welles. John, this kid's gonna play Lucius. Will you work for nothing? Orson! Quiet, I'm negotiating. I mean, the story's about a young person who wants to be famous. He wants to be involved in the arts. He wants to be in show business, or at least in the shadow of that. And what happens, you know, set against this clock ticking down to what's going to be a very famous New York opening night, you know, the opening night of, of Julius Caesar. This is Shakespearean verse for speaking. I know my lines. And I say you need mo time. <laughs> I was looking through old magazines from the 30s, just, you know, trying to soak up this period because I wasn't alive then, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to write a novel that's in that period, you know, all the music and the headlines, and so I'm just trying to, you know, imbibe that period. And I, I came upon a Theater Arts Monthly, which was a, you know, kind of a fan magazine for people that like New York theater. And there in the magazine is this photograph from Julius Caesar with Wells sitting on stage with a little boy next to him playing a ukulele lute kind of thing. And I looked at the photograph and I said, that's the book. You know, if I could tell the story of this moment from that boy's point of view, that would be a really interesting story. And Wells would be this kind of, you know, charismatic villain almost really or you know this is something, something larger than life character who you know rolls into a scene that all cylinders firing at, you know 90 miles an hour changes everyone's life and then he's out the door again and everyone's what was that the thing that i wished was that just for 10 minutes i could be on the streets of new york in 1937 you know five minutes i would have taken just because I wanted to see, you know, what did it smell like and what it, where was the light? And that's the kind of stuff I wanted. And then I thought, well, okay, I can't do that other than look at old films. So I thought if I, if I invent this world in consistent enough detail, and I always describe the room like this and the light like this, that eventually I can trick myself almost in thinking that I was there, you know, in the present tense of that moment. And that was, that was the fun of writing the book, is because every once in a while, it worked. This is the Westfield uh, Field House over here, which is built in the 1930s. The book opens on a Saturday. And so there's um, Richard Hears football practice over here. And Richard plays drums in the Westfield High School marching band. And this is all going to set up the fact that the way he gets hired by Orson Welles is because he can play a drum roll. Steam radiators and an old. Author Robert Kaplow's attention to historic detail, time, so what actually to... could have happened to a teenager in a particular time and place, helped director Richard Linklater turn the book into a movie. Once they bought the rights to the book, I thought that would be sort of the last I would hear from them, but I was getting calls all the time. Would they have this in 1930? Would this music work in this scene? How would people dress? You know, I got calls from Richard Linklater or people in the art department, and they followed it really with a lot of integrity, I thought. Kaplow was even in on the casting. I got a call from um, Richard Linklater one day, and he said, guess who I had lunch with yesterday? I said, who? He goes, Zac Efron. And there's this long pause. And then Linklater says, you don't know who that is, do you? I said, no, I don't know who that is. And he goes, it's OK. Um, he goes, this is the star of High School Musical. I said, oh, yeah, I know, I know what High School Musical is. And he goes, yeah, this is you know, a very big star and all this kind of stuff. And when Linklater told me that, I said, what do you think? And he goes, yeah, he, goes, he, he said, I had lunch with him. He goes, and in 30 seconds, you knew he was, he was fine for this role. He was charming. He was funny. And he had that sort of star thing. He really did. <laughs> So tell me who you are. What are you offering? Wealth, 
travel, fame. I can take you to movies that have all that. You're cute. You know, Linklater's very good at casting. That's what he's sort of famous for. I mean, he found Matthew McConaughey. A lot of these people that, you know, um, in Days and Confused is their first movie, and they went on to significant film careers. Casting Orson Welles, however, presented Linklater with a challenge of a different order. One of the first things he said to me, because do you have any idea who could cast as Orson Welles? He said, that's the problem. He says, people keep saying to me, when are you going to start this movie? And I said, we can't start until we get Welles. Then, a friend told Kaplow to go see a one-man play about Welles that was in New York. I think the show was called Rosebud, The Lives of Orson Welles, and starred this young um, British actor, Christian Mackay. After the first act, I, I turned to my girlfriend, Lynn, who I went with, and I said, what do you think? And she goes, it's like Welles is there in the room. Long story short, Linklater flew in, saw the show, agreed with Kaplow, tried to convince his producers to cast an unknown, failed, shot a screen test at his own expense, succeeded, and shooting finally began with Christian Mackay as Orson Welles. It's an arrogant I am Orson Selfish. Welles! And every single one of you stands here as an adjunct to my vision. You don't like the way I work here? There's the door. They had a showing for people who were 25 and, and younger, just to see how the film would play with a younger audience. And the audience liked it, and you know, they, they, and at the end they were asking questions of the audience, and they said, has anybody here heard of Orson Welles? And not a single hand went up in the audience. We've got an odd property here, and that we've got this, you know, the hottest teenage star there is, and yet there's this other guy in the title, Orson Welles, who, who's that guy? And it's in 1937, and it's Shakespeare, and how are we gonna bring those two worlds together? Orson Welles, of course, was a major star for an earlier generation. Uh, I mean, it's almost unbelievable when, when you think of what he accomplished at so young, you know, that he would do all this theater work when he was 22. The following year, 1938, he would change radio with The War of the Worlds, and he's 23. And then with the success of War of the Worlds, he's offered a film contract by RKO in which He's allowed to, you know, direct, write, produce, and star. He's never even been in a movie, never even been in a movie. And he's given a contract that no one in the history of Hollywood had ever been given. So he makes this first film in secret, and it's released on his 26th birthday, and it's Citizen Kane. And I think if this book or this film puts Orson Welles into a young person's universe, I'd be very happy with that. Images of magnificence. That's what you see in every great actor's eyes. That's all that matters in this world. I'm proud of every member of this company. It's gotta be one of those magic nights tonight. Can you feel it? It's showtime.